Okay, hello everyone. Can you guys hear me? Okay, great. So you probably know the drill by now. So uh, we will start the quiz as usual at 11.10. And then uh, after that, 15 minutes later, when you're done with the quiz, please come back and we go over several questions related to the assembly language. Okay. If there are any questions you have before we start the quiz, please send them in the chat.
Hi, David. So the quiz will start in three minutes. If it doesn't, please let me know the truth as usual. Okay, so the test should be available for you now. Good luck and see you in 15 minutes.
Okay, I think it should be time to start for us. I hope most of you already finished and I see more than 60 people already finished, so it should be fine. Okay. Can you guys hear me well? Okay, can I request that at least some of you turn on the cameras? It would be very helpful for me to see what's going on when we go over the questions today. Okay, let's go. So today we're going to talk about uh, assembly that we just learned. So we started to learn the basics of the instructions and decoding and interpretation. And essentially what we're gonna practice today uh, briefly is to look at several of these instructions and see uh, how they work, how they decode it uh, into machine instructions. And we're gonna try several simple questions on how you can write something in assembly. That's essentially what we're trying. So this is more like an intro into assembly type of questions. Okay. So let's do the, the first instruction. So what I want you to do in these questions is to very briefly write what each instructions are doing. And we're starting with the top instruction. So just quickly type uh, on what this instruction is doing in your opinion. Okay, the first one is very easy. So we subtract register uh, T1 from T0. So it's T0 minus T1 as Sam said, and we are placing the result in T7. Okay. So how about the second instruction? Well, the second is not a plus, yeah. So it cannot be a plus. Yep, don't rush. Yeah, essentially you do a bitwise and, right? And you had uh, one of the parameters to be a constant, right? So one parameter is T0. The second parameter uh, is a constant 15 that would be represented as four ones. And the result of this and will be placed into register T7. Yeah, so someone wrote it properly there. Okay, how about the last instruction? And I want the more people participate, the better, because that's a good practice on how quickly you can understand what it's doing. What is this array? Well, try to guess. That's what we spend the lecture on. Uh, so what S stands for? Yes, someone says shift right. Yes. So this is arithmetic and it's not called Sign, but yes, sign plays a role. This is an arithmetic shift of register T1, two bits to the right with the results stored in the T2, right? Uh, uh, there are many correct answers. So one thing to remind you, remember there's a difference between arithmetic and logical shift. Can someone tell me what's the difference between arithmetic and logical? So here we do arithmetic shift. Yeah, so the answer that Yuzhan said is essentially correct. So in the arithmetic shift, we didn't fill in the empty slots up front with zeros. We fill it that with the sign bit. We keep the sign bit essentially. Okay, so before we go into some decoding stuff, a little bit of a reminder here on how uh, different registers are stored. So uh, for example, register zero has a value zero. 
and don't get confused. Don't think that the uh, register zero, like temporary zero, would be stored uh, in the first registers, right? That's where students are frequently confused. The T0 is actually stored in register eight, in physical register eight. So you should remember that when you do the mapping of the temporaries, right? So register one is specially reserved. Those are return values. This is function parameters. Those are the most commonly used registers, temporaries, right? And some special safe temporaries that are also available. And there are uh, several registers specifically to operate with memory and function support. They're gonna learn soon. And some register reserved for SCURN. Okay, so with this reminder, let's try and to be an assembler. So let's try and translate the following assembly language instruction and add into machine code, right? So how would we do it? I'll give you one example and then the next example you would do yourself. So and I, I'll show you how it's going on. I think a lot of you should remember, but just a reminder. So uh, when we see the instruction like that, right? The first thing we look is whether or what type it is. So this instruction is an R type. That means, and what it means, who can answer me? So I can say, what does it mean for this to be an R type instruction? What does it mean for the opcode? Yes, Yanin said it's six zeros, right? So first six bits are all zeros. And the function of an add is actually stored in the last six bit, in funct, right? And then we also need to encode the, all the registers, register RS, register T, and register RD. So the first two are parameters, and the third one is the destination register. So what we're gonna do is when we see the instruction like that in the instruction register, um, so a central arithmetic operation start with six zeros, right? So we had those six zeros here, and the functional code for um, add, our type add is one with all zeros. That's what we store here. And this is three registers we need to encode. And those bits are undefined, right? So they can be anything. Usually they store zeros, but the access here to show those bits are not needed, okay? So the, the step number two is figure out the register values. And again, I already remind you, don't get into this trap that the register T0 translate into physical register zero. That's not the case. The temporary register starts at register eight. So T0 goes into register eight, T1 goes into nine, and T7 goes into register 15, okay? So essentially this is their binary representation. This is eight, this is nine, and this is 15, okay? Any questions here? So this is how the decoding works. This is why assembly is relatively straightforward. You just do some lookups and some simple tables and that's it. Any questions? How, uh, where to know function identifier? So essentially for you, uh, you can have like a table where all of that store. For me, MIPS instructions is relatively straightforward. In the real hardware, uh, there is a table, right? The mapping table that's hardwired, right? And that table has the mapping. So it, it knows which function means what. So the hand, does it answer your question? Him. Okay. So yeah, so it's essentially uh, for you, you can just have that table somewhere that's, there's no point just when memorizing things, those things are stored. But for some common instructions, we're gonna repeat them quite frequently. You're probably gonna memorize some of codes quickly, right? Uh, for registers, it's relatively straightforward. The only thing you need to remember that T0 starts with eight, right? So if you have that information, you can always get it done. Okay, so those are exactly the registers we put in here. Okay, let's try something similar to our first questions, but a little bit more complicated instructions. So what is the first instruction doing here? Remember, this is just the meaning, right? Okay. 
Okay, I guess Sam posted a good uh, link to the assembly reference. Thanks, Sam. Yeah, so I think Crotix has the right response. So we had a branch equal here, right? So essentially what it does, you jump to the line that is labeled with the top, labeled top, if register T2 is equal to zero, right? And the zero is represented as uh, a special register, zero register, right? Okay, how about the second instruction? It's a little bit more complicated. Anyone knows what it's doing? Yeah, pretty much correct. It just does one little things here. So before jumping to uh, their location stores in Regic and T0, and I think Quintan has said that part correct. Remember, before jumping, we need to store the current PC location into a special register array, right? Register 31. And then we jump to the stored location, right? So we can return if needed. Okay. This is just a little nuance here. And that's storing into a special registers is implicit. You don't need to write this register. That's part of the semantic of this jump instruction. That's different from just a regular, uh, uh, just J, just regular jump. Okay. Okay, so now it's your time to try to decode the instruction into the machine code. So I show you one and I guess Sam sent you a link to the manual. So go ahead and try to translate this thing. I give you uh, two minutes, uh, try to out and you can do things step by step. So you can, for example, say, this is my first six bits. This is my next six bits. This is my next five bits and things like that. So don't just send like one long binary, just send them in nice uh, human readable segments. So try to decode these instructions by yourself. Okay, Sam got the op code. Please move on. I guess the op code is the easier part. Like how about the other parts? A little bit a hint for everyone on what you should have in. So this is I type instruction. It's obvious from Sam response that the opcode is now not zeros, not zeros, right? There is a certain opcode here. Okay, so I only got the whole thing done. Okay. So I guess we had answers now. So I can go and show it to everyone who didn't figure out it yet. I think you guys had the 
Krakoj, although I see some differences in the registers between Jashan's uh, response and Yuran's response. So let's see, do it properly together. So this is the opcode, right? That was sent correctly. Can you guys hear me? Okay. So then the next step is the register values. And remember T0 translates to register eight right? And T7 to say to register 15. And 6-bit immediate value is minus 1. So this is exactly what happens. This is the uh, T7. So this is 0, 1. Uh, uh, sorry, this is the, the value for uh, T0. And this is the value for T7. Okay, I guess you found your mistake yourself. So anyway, this is relatively straightforward, right? Anyone has any questions about how we just did it? So minus one is stored in this form, right? In the hardware for this type of instruction. So this is where you get all the ones. This is the minus one. Okay, any questions? If there are no questions, I guess the last question for today, uh, a, little bit, a little bit to you warm you up for more complicated stuff, is using the existing instructions that we already have, the basic ones, and not having any special instructions to move the registers, how you can write an assembly language program that can swap the values of register T0 and T1 using T2 T2 as a temporary value. So you, I expect you to write a few lines of assembly code that would just swap the values of T0 and T1. As you can imagine, it's not a particular long assembly code. So I hope you can type it relatively fast. So I'll give you guys whatever, I think one minute should be enough, but if you need more time, I'm just waiting for a few correct results. Going down, there's no instructions move T0 to T2. Did you see any move instructions? Yeah, so that's, that's the whole point. There is no moves. You need to be a little bit more creative. There's no need for a special move. Remember, risk philosophy is not to have instructions that are not needed. If you can do it with something else, do it with something else. Okay, had many different options here, but I think you guys started to think in a proper direction. So the easiest thing is to use add. That's what I would do. Like that's the first I would think it's just adding and there is no need to set anything to zeros because there's a zero register, right? So you just had uh, this add, right? It was zero T2, T0, right? So this value, so it's essentially like what critic said, right? It just, it's not a die, right? It's just regular add. It's not an immediate value. You can also use source, yeah. But I think the add, that's the, the easiest thing that I was thinking about. And you need three lines. Okay. Okay, this is everything I have for today. Um, so keep learning assembly. Uh, we would post the project details next week. 
uh, start working on it. It should be exciting to try to build something more interesting and less primitive than what we're doing in the classes. Uh, but otherwise, that's it. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Oh, yes. And if you had any questions, I'm here. So just send a message, say you want to talk to me, and I'll meet with you one on one right after the class. Just stay on the, tell me that you want to meet me, and I'll bring you to the breakout room. So I'll check with the TAs about Lab, lab 9. Maybe it's not needed because we're working on the projects, and I'll check with them. Okay, Jonathan want to be in the breakout room. Okay. Hello, Professor. Hello, Jonathan. How are you doing? I'm good. Well, actually, not that good. What's, what's I'm happening? Like not understanding um, the quizzes and all very clearly. I just finished a quiz, but you know, I didn't get that good. But anyways, for a week eight quiz, question seven. Um, I'm having I'm confused. I know there's a there's a Piazza post that that says it. That tells me about it, but I'm still confused. <laughs> I'm even more confused. Can you just walk me through how, how it's going? So is this last week's? Yeah, week? last week, week eight, question seven. Okay. Can you share your screen to have the question there? Yeah, let me look for it. This one. Okay. So there was already people already posted the answers on PIC. Yeah, so what exactly was not clear? Okay. So first of all, I'm not entirely sure what's four way associative. Okay. Uh, so you don't understand associativity. Let's start with that. So the best way to think about associativity is that um uh, so you understand the direct map cache, right? It means yeah. that every uh, block has only one possible location in the cache, right? Okay. So based on the address, we look and say, you are gonna be here, and then you're gonna be here. And you're like, zip uh, it goes here. Uh, no, I can't, <laughs> I can't see, what? What do you mean you're gonna be here? Again? What I mean is that you have an address, let's say address zero, that can only go to the first block. Let's say you have a cache, not this example, but in general, direct map cache. Every address goes to one specific location. So zero goes in zero. And the next, if it's a word, the whole word goes into the next four bytes. So zero, one, two, and three bytes go into one block. Oh, by the way, let me stop recording. 